My name is Richard Angel. I am the Interim Head of Policy and Public Affairs at the Terence Higgins Trust. I'm wearing my LA t-shirt inspired by the amazing Russell T Davis drama series, It's a Sin, made by the wonderful Philip Normal, who is a, a politician living with HIV, the first mayor of a uh, uh, of a local authority to be living with HIV openly and he has done such wonderful fundraising for THT but the It's a Sin programme has inspired lots of conversations about HIV both then in the 1980s and today uh, now and I am joined by a most remarkable person Stephen Doughty is the MP for Cardiff South and Penarth he's the chair of the all-party group on HIV AIDS and he is a shadow minister in the Labour front bench team. He has been a remarkable campaigner from his early days as an aid worker and advocate for uh, the UK taking its global responsibility to work with people globally to make sure that we are uh, helping the world community uh, with justice and uh, development issues. And of course, HIV AIDS remains a global uh, pandemic. Uh, but he also does that work here domestically um, as an MP that's a patron of LGBT Labour and a great supporter of the Terence Siggins Trust. So Stephen, thank you so much for joining us Pleasure. today. Thank you for wearing your uh, World AIDS Day ribbon and continuing to be that amazing ambassador, uh, not just talking the policy issues out, we're working with Stephen at the moment to un, uh, un, un, unclog the issues about people living with HIV, ensuring they get the vaccine at the right time and the right moment in the, uh, in the rollout but also your role you take in fighting the stigma that persists around HIV AIDS. But we're going to do something fun today, not just talk about all the policy, but we're doing the quiz that Terence Higgins Trust have put together, inspired by It's a Sin, looking at the issues of HIV AIDS. I'm going to hit you with the first one. It's a really easy, simple one. What's the difference between HIV and AIDS? Is it A, HIV is a virus, but AIDS is a collection of illnesses caused by the virus? B, HIV is a disease that results in AIDS, or C, they're the same, HIV is the new name for AIDS. Drum roll. It's, it's the first one, Richard. Um, HIV is a virus, but AIDS is a collection of illnesses caused by the virus. And actually, you see that very well in It's a Sin with um, uh, a number of the AIDS-related illnesses that um, tragically people went through and, and tragically some people still go through globally. 700,000 people still died unnecessarily from AIDS-related diseases in 2019, 1.7 million new people infected with the virus, HIV. Um, and you, you see actually, and it's a sin, I think quite powerfully, some of the um, diseases and conditions that people don't think about um, that are associated particularly, for example, some of the neurological conditions um, you see, you know, tragically affecting, for example, um, uh, Colin. And, um, you know, uh, it, but it is important to understand the difference between the, the virus and um, AIDS. And obviously, um, one of the things that we, we now know, which is which is so wonderful with the treatments that are available, is that you can live with the virus, um, but it can be suppressed down to the level that it doesn't result in AIDS and the illnesses that make up AIDS. Um, and that's the remarkable thing that has changed since those dark days of the 1980s and the early days of the pandemic. Well, you got it right. Um, big surprise there, but absolutely brilliant and, uh, and completely right. And that difference between AIDS and HIV is a conversation we continue to need to have for all the reasons that you said. So next question, mm -hmm. who is our namesake Terry Higgins? A, the founder of the Terence Higgins Trust. B, the scientist who discovered HIV. C, one of the first people to die of an AIDS related illness in the UK or D, the health secretary to introduce free HIV treatment. So Terry Higgins, Terence Higgins, uh, was one of the first people to die from an AIDS related illness in the UK. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, but I think he originally came from Wales as well. He did come from Wales, absolutely. And um, yeah, he, he was a Welshman that had uh, moved to London and uh, his friends and uh, a partner at the time uh, helped found the Terence Higgins Trust. And you see the early days of THT in the It's a Sin yeah. uh, documentary. We're ostracised to the side of the pub. In the second episode, we're actually kicked out of the pub for distributing the leaflets that we uh, made at the time to let people know about the early days of the crisis. And of course, you see that monologue from uh, uh, from uh, Ollie's character, uh, Richie, where he says, they say it affects homosexuals, Haitians and haemophiliacs. Like there's a disease only targeting the letter H, where's it going to be next? The people in Hartlepool, Hampshire and Hull. You see what Hull in common? It's not true. I don't believe a word of it. So 
yeah, that, that denialism was out there at the time. Terence Higgins Trust was there at the beginning, fighting that and trying to educate the community about the effects. And uh, we hope that the work that we continue to do lives up to his memory and the early aspirations that his friends, family and loved ones had for him there. So that is uh, uh, really important. He was just 37 when he died, which is the same age that I am uh, now. Uh, and that was 39 years ago. So it's remarkable um, uh, uh, where we are. Yeah, so and, and next- we, we, oh, I was going to say, we, we, we held, um, uh, we, we displayed the AIDS Memorial quilt um, in Parliament a couple of years ago, um, which was a very sort of powerful event, which memorialises many of those who, who lost their lives in the, in the early years of the pandemic in the UK. And it's really, really important that we remember and, and, and recognise all the individuals who, who lost their lives before the treatments were available um, that we can, you know, so benefit from today, um, and that their loved ones and families are are, are are still around and still dealing with that that tragic loss. Um, and it's really important that's part of what what we do that we recognise what went on in the past as well as celebrate in the future. It's always a balance on World Aid Day, isn't it? It's an opportunity to remember and to memorialise those that were lost, often in the prime of their lives, and definitely too young and often unnecessarily. And but also uh, the opportunity to focus on what can still change and what could be better. Yeah. So next question, roughly how many people are living with HIV in the UK? A, 15,000, B, 75,000, C, 105,000, or D, 755,000? What do you reckon? So uh, I'm not always great on that, but I was pretty sure uh, it's 105,200 uh, roughly in the UK at the moment. Um, of course, there's people who are undiagnosed. That's one of the big reasons why we're all campaigning to um, improve testing and um, the rollout of testing and home testing kits and so on. THD is doing such brilliant work on that. Um, but yeah, I think it's 105,000 roughly. Absolutely. So we... Uh... We think there's about 6,700 people UK-wide that are undiagnosed at the moment. There's lots of work, HIV testing week being one of them, to diagnose uh, those people going forward. Some of the recommendations from the HIV Commission really focused on how you could get that undiagnosis down. But we see late diagnosis a really particular thing uh, amongst Black Africans. But you'll know, Stephen, that's a big issue in Wales, is that the late diagnosis is one of the tricky issues that we're still trying to deal with there where we've seen lots of developments you know one of the earliest places to uh, adopt prep and of course the first uk nation to say we would be free of uh, new transmissions of hiv by 2030 but still that's a stubborn issue of late diagnosis that we need to uh, uh, need to need to focus on so next question which of the following does not protect you from hiv so prep post uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis uh, the pill condoms or HIV treatment, so which it, does not, which does you. not, it's, it's which does not, it's the, it's it's the, the pill. pill, the pill, the, the pill, course, pill. You from, you know, it's a contraception pill to stop you getting pregnant, but of course you can take PrEP to mean that you uh, uh, don't, uh, uh, taken by HIV negative people to stay negative, condoms of course stop HIV transmission, but of course that massive development that I know you talk about lots of U equals U, if you are on treatment, your viral load can be suppressed so you can't pass on the virus, both to sexual partners and if you're having a baby. And one of the real success stories in the UK is how we have stopped that, what we call vertical transmission, um, because we have basically 100% testing in maternity services, so nobody passes on the virus to their babies, which is- no, absolutely, um, absolutely, but one of the big challenges we see in the, in the UK and actually globally is um, the number of women and girls inf infected with HIV um, newly and needlessly. And actually there's some really fantastic innovations coming out there globally at the moment, um, as well as specific programmes um, targeting women and girls. And you know, I've been involved in a lot of work around those internationally and particularly within Sub-Saharan Africa, but actually there's a, a, a fantastic new product that um, we're hoping coming out soon from um, IPM, which is, um, uh, is a vaginal ring, actually, which, which actually um, not only can um, assist with the, the fight against HIV, but also actually can be combined with a, um, a, a contraceptive as well. So really empowering women um, uh, not only to protect themselves from HIV, but also um, uh, to have control over their own um, bodies and decisions about um, families and, 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 and pregnancy. So um, it's really important when we look at all of these issues that we look at the wider um issues around uh, around health and, 
and, and well-being and particularly for um, uh, women and girls globally and actually that's one of the reasons we work as a group with a lot of the other global health groups um, you know because the fight against HIV is also you know, a fight against TB against malaria against measles and for maternal health and for women's health um, globally as well. That's amazing. That leads us nicely to our next question, actually. So it's a sin focuses on the AIDS epidemic in those early days for gay and bisexual men. But of course, that isn't uh, the global uh, experience. Women are disproportionately affected by HIV uh, globally, obviously women of colour in particular. Um, so what percentage of people receiving care in the UK uh, in 2019 were women? So women, uh, what percentage of people living with HIV, getting HIV treatment, in the UK are women. So, so option one is 1%, option two is 5%, option three is 21%, and option four is 31%. Um, unfortunately it's the high number it's 31 percent and um I, th I think yeah as i was saying i think i think there's been sometimes not enough focus on the impact of uh, of hiv and aids on on women and girls globally and and we know through some of the work we've done as i said inquiries both in the uk and, in, and internationally about some of the particular challenges and um we all need to 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 rethink what we know about the the, the epidemic and the uh, and, and the different circumstances for different uh, groups of people because particularly as we're going to try and drive down to that no new infections target and to getting everybody on treatment and getting everybody undetectable we've got to look at the groups that are have, have been the hardest to reach and actually sometimes that's to do with information awareness sometimes it's to do with the um the the the, the products and the particular health um pathways and solutions for for people um but you know the first thing we've got to do is understand the actual nature of the uh, of the disease and the nature of the pandemic in the UK and globally. It's so, so true and it is remarkable for people who when they're learning about HIV uh, here in the UK to know that basically a third of uh, people living with HIV in the UK are women, uh, two thirds of those are black women um, and that's a very important part of the experience for people but stigma I think it's fair to say is stronger amongst uh, women and particularly people of colour so you, the representation to people who are kind of open about their HIV status is disproportionately men, but that doesn't mean that it's not something that affects people disproportionately. And one of the things that really troubles me in the work that we do is that figures that came out just before World AIDS Day last year said that uh, when people go to a sexual health clinic, um, a quarter of a million years still aren't even offered a HIV test, and over half of those are women, and half of those women are black. So it's like a massive uh, problem yeah. that even the healthcare professionals that work on this day in, day out, are not testing women proportionately, and, and, and we might be stopping diagnosing people. In the, um, the social impact bonds that the Elton John AIDS Foundation support down in uh, Lambeth, Lewisham and Southwark, they're testing people as a kind of opt-out service in A&E and GP. I think you yeah. did an event with them, in fact, yeah, in we testing did. week a couple of weeks ago. They found a woman who was 87, and they, she would never have been picked up in any of the targeted interventions that we've traditionally done on people with risk factors around HIV, but because of that opt-out testing, she was able to be diagnosed onto treatment and, uh, uh, and all the stuff associated with that. So it yeah. really is something that affects women uh, as well as men. And it's something we've got to kind of continue to, to focus on. Yeah. So that's obviously our quiz. You've got a hundred percent of the answers, right, Stephen? I was interested in asking a question that's not on our quiz, which is mm. what has it's a sin mean to you? Because you know, you're somebody, that has been out about LGBT, being LGBT in your role as a public official. But of course, the work that you've done as chair of this important all party group on HIV AIDS, what has seeing this drama come to life meant to you? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's a remarkable piece of work. Obviously, Russell, Russell is a remarkable uh, guy and and the um the actors um as well you know the way that they portrayed the different um characters which very much reflected real life stories of of, of mm. people and were very much inspired by real life real life stories and um you know mutual friend of ours lisa power who was one of the um, historical consultants on the series who was very much there at the forefront in the in the campaigning in the in those years and working with groups like switchboard and so on which are so well depicted so i think i think i think you know as a, as a piece of 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 of, of storytelling of a crucial part of our history um it's it's remarkable but i think the most powerful thing has been that it's made people sit up and talk about hiv and aids again and to recognize you know what 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 bad times we went through 
and what has changed as well, uh, but quite frankly, also what some of the challenges that still remain. I mean, for, for me, one of the most powerful things actually is that it tells the stories as well of um, communities out, outside of outside of London, uh, people who came from very different communities, such as you know the South Wales Valleys um, or the British Nigerian community, um, uh, and and the different perspectives. And yet, this was a, a, a disease that did affect and continues to affect people from every every walk of life, every um, sexuality, every uh, gender identity and, and, and every part of this country and, and the world. And, um, you know, I think it was a THC campaign a few years ago, you know, it, it ain't over, you know, we've made huge progress, um, but, you know, there's still a huge way to go. And globally, you know, 1.7 million new infections in 2019, 700,000 people still losing their lives uh, needlessly to what is now a, tr a treatable uh, condition. Um, now I was told 1.8 billion cut from the global fight against yeah. AIDS in just the last two financial years. So, and with the focus on COVID, that will sadly probably continue. Um, yeah, it's so a real, it's real worry. Huge risk. Yeah, huge, huge risk. I mean, the, the head of the UN Global Fund, um, Peter Sands, who we regularly meet with, you know, they, they've talked of potentially, um, uh, you know, huge steps back in, in, in the progress that's been made. Um, you know, the, the UK continues to be a generous donor to the, to the UN Global Fund and the WHO and others. And, you know, we as a cross party group strongly welcome that. Um, but uh, this is about you know, wider investment in global health and so some of the cuts we've seen in, in the aid budget and the loss of that expertise that there was there in um, DFID being merged into the Foreign Office, um, you know, is, is deeply disappointing. But we've also seen really welcome commitments, you know, in, 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 in the UK from governments across the UK um, to, 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 to meeting the targets, which is which is wonderful. But I mean, I, I, th I think I think um, I think, you know, the even for somebody like me, who, who I, I would consider myself relatively well, you know, informed about um, the pandemic here and, and abroad and, and history, there were still some really, really shocking things for me in it. And, you know, particularly, you know, the detention of of, of Colin in a, in a hospital, um, some of the sort of, you know, outright discrimination and and hatred that was, experience, that was experienced um, of people, the fear um and unfortunately you know particularly stigma we mentioned that you know it's still one of the huge um challenges around hiv and we've all got to do a job in combating the myths that are out there actually educating uh a, a new generation and working to support people to live the long happy and and, and healthy lives that they can can lead now which is the, the the big positive over the last few years one of the questions i keep being asked when i've been doing these talks about it's a scene is how should you react if somebody tells you they're HIV positive. What, what what's your advice, Stephen? Well, I've I've had that happen directly uh, with 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 uh, uh, close friends and and a colleague, um, and I think firstly, it, you know, it's, it's to be there as a support and as an ally and to listen uh, and to listen and be there uh, as a friend and and not to jump to conclusions or make judgments or, or whatever and to understand what it is they would they would like you to do by telling you is it you know uh, that they need particular support or guidance or advice or signposting or simply that they just want to be able to tell someone that they can trust and they know isn't going to judge them um for their status or or, or anything else um and uh you know certainly as i said having gone through that that conversation myself with a with a number of people um you know i hope i was able on a personal level let alone on a professional level to be able to be there to support them you know but but i, I think you know there are so many wonderful organizations of which thc is 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 one of the key ones you know out there who are there to support people living with hiv now and unfortunately you know we, we saw in those early years you know a lot of these campaigns and organizations were getting off the ground but a lot of people were left completely in the dark and didn't have those support networks didn't and then on top of that um had you know had, had you know the, the fear that it was literally a death sentence and and also all of the stigma around you know perhaps their sexuality or gender identity and everything on top of that let alone if you came from a you know particularly marginalized um community on top of that so we have to recognize the intersectionality as well between a lot of these things and the additional pressures that that might come but we've got some incredibly brave you know i mean lord russell moore my colleague in in parliament mm. came out and spoke about his um hiv status very powerfully of course you know chris smith historically and, and and many others and um you know that that's really really important um but in the end you know we're all human beings and you've got to be there for somebody um uh, if they, they they share that diagnosis with you because it's a it's a big deal i always prescribe to people a hug the best thing you can do you yeah. know, the fear of that moment is you're going to be rejected and if you can do anything to console that you're, you're going to be there to support them through, whether it's the access to treatment, the fighting stigma that continues to persist. You know, the best thing you can do is give someone a hug 
uh, and that continued. You know, we did uh, polling two years ago. Half of all Britons wouldn't kiss somebody living with HIV and a third wouldn't turn up for a date. You'd never be able to get HIV from kissing or going on dates. But you know, now because of the great treatment, people can't pass it on. There's loads of ways that you can yourself stay uh, HIV negative if you, uh, if you, if you do it. So uh, yeah, a hug is the best thing that you can I think, give someone in that moment. So thank you for that and all the work that you're doing, Steve. And if you want to follow the amazing work of the All Party Group on HIV AIDS, it is appghivaids.org.uk. And then on Twitter, at APBG underscore HIV underscore AIDS. And you can find their important work. And Stephen is on at S Doughty MP. Um, thank you everybody for the work and the support that you have given Terence Higgins Trust over all the generations that we've been uh, fighting uh, the issue of HIV AIDS and the stigma associated with it, in particular support around uh, It's a Sin being there. The people that have just spontaneously made uh, uh, you know, creative uh, product, whether it's La t-shirts, there's been posters, there's been all kinds of things on Itzy and other uh, 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 channels that have been really key to supporting the channel. You know, Stephen's group did a great report on uh, the impacts of COVID on HIV, and that's for a whole different video. But as a charity fundraising, COVID has been a real nightmare uh, for us. So the support that people have continued to give really helps. If you haven't yet taken the quiz yourself, you can do so at THT org.uk and of course follow us on all of our socials thank you very much Stephen for your help support not only with this quiz but the career that you have focused on of helping people uh, fighting injustice generally but of course the issue of HIV AIDS uh, in particular thank you very much thanks a lot